This blanket is fully reversible, it's a one row repeat and it's not garter stitch. In this video I want to show you how to knit a design I have named Daisy and I have deliberately designed it to be one of the simplest blankets that you will ever knit. To make a blanket like mine you are going to need 400 grams of double knit yarn. If you are not in the UK you may know it as light worsted weight or three weight yarn. You can knit this blanket with any yarn that you like, but if you want to replicate the texture and the thickness of mine, then that is what you'll need. You are also going to need some circular knitting needles. You're going to want needles that are long enough to accommodate your stitches. So in this case, a blanket 60 centimetres wide, I would go for needles that are about 120 centimetres long. You are also going to need some embroidery scissors and a tapestry needle to sort out those ends. So without further ado, grab your needles and let's get knitting. The pattern multiple for this blanket is six plus one. So what you want to do is cast on a number that is a multiple of six or just count lots and lots of sixes. And then when you are done, you are going to add one extra stitch onto the end of that cast on. I like to use the long tail cast on. And in the case of this blanket, I actually do think that the long tail cast on is the best cast on for this blanket. But if you really dislike it, you can use the cast on method that you prefer. I'm just going to cast on a very small sample of 43 stitches today, but you can cast on as many or as few stitches as you need. The beauty of this blanket is there is only one row to remember. So every single row from start to finish in this project is exactly the same. So you want to start by knitting the first six stitches. Once you've done that, you'll want to repeat the next six stitches until you have one stitch left to work on this left hand needle. So you want to purl one and knit five. Once more, that's purl one and knit five all the way across until you have one stitch left to work on that left hand needle. This final stitch should come at the end of your knit five and if it doesn't then you've gone wrong with your cast on. Now I like to maintain a really nice neat side edge so the end stitches of each row are selvage stitches and we work those slightly differently to the rest of the row and we are going to slip them purl wise with the yarn in front. So I'm a continental knitter so to pop the yarn to the front of my work I literally just lift it up with my right hand needle and then to slip the stitch, you're going to pop your right hand needle into the stitch as if to purl. So you're going to go in from right to left, not from left to right. And then once the stitch is nice and firmly on your right hand needle, you can take the left hand needle out. And the last thing you want to do is to make sure that your yarn is very definitely at the front of your work. Because if you leave it looped over, you might accidentally create an extra stitch. And that is your repeat row for this blanket. Let's go over it just once more together. You start your repeat row by knitting the first six stitches. And then you want to repeat the next six stitches across your row until you have one stitch left to work on this left hand needle. You are going to work purl one and knit five. Once more, purl one and knit five. And you want to repeat that block of six stitches all the way across your row until you have just one stitch left to work. And that should come after a knit five. So it should come at the end of your pattern repeat. When you get to this final stitch of the row, you want to slip it purlwise with the yarn in front. And as a recap, that involves popping your working yarn to the front of your work in the way that you feel comfortable with. And then popping your right hand needle into that last stitch from right to left, slipping it firmly onto the right hand needle. Remove the left hand needle once you've done that 
and then make sure that your yarn is very firmly at the front of your work so you don't accidentally create a new stitch. And that is how you build your blanket, just this one row over and over until you are ready to finish. I'll come back in a moment with a slightly bigger sample and I'll talk you through how you cast off and finish your blanket and give you a couple of tips to give you a nice symmetrical top and bottom edge. So here we go, my sample has grown a little bit and you can see that it is exactly the same on both sides. So I really mean it when I say that this blanket has no right and wrong side. However, when you cast off, if you want the cast on and cast off to look as similar as possible, then I have a little tip for you as to when to cast off. You can see here, your long tail cast on has two very distinct sides. You have a smooth side here that I like to use as the right side, but I know a lot of people don't like this side as the right side, they prefer the other side. If I turn over my work, you can see here that the cast on looks very different on this side. So it doesn't matter which side you choose as your right and wrong side. That's down to personal preference. But when it comes to casting off, if you want your top and your bottom to match, then I have a little tip for you. When you come to cast off, you want to have this smooth side of your long tail cast on facing you. If you have used the long tail cast on like I suggested at the beginning, then your tail should be on the left hand bottom corner of your work when you come to cast off. So it should be at the opposite end to the beginning of your row. Casting off like this will give you a very similar effect at the top as casting off with this side facing you gives this same smooth top edge on this side of the blanket and the other side of the blanket looks a little bit more like this. So it means that your blanket will look the same top and bottom, but it really doesn't matter if you just want to cast off on any old row. This is just a tip if like me, you're a little bit particular about how the finished object looks. To cast off this blanket, we are going to cast off in pattern. So that means that where we normally knit a stitch, we are going to knit it. And on the stitches that we normally purl, we are still going to purl them even though we are casting off. So the basic rule of thumb with this type of cast off is that you never have more than two stitches on your right hand needle. So you want to start off by knitting the first two stitches, making sure to keep your tension on your stitches nice and relaxed. You don't want them too tight or your top edge won't lay flat. Once you've knitted the first two stitches with your left hand needle, you want to grab the first stitch you knitted, lift it up and over the second stitch and off that right hand needle. So you have gone from two stitches on your right hand needle down to one. Then you want to work across working one more stitch at a time and repeating that process. So as you can see here, I'm still in the knit section of this pattern repeat. So I'm going to knit and lift the first six stitches. When you hit a stitch that you would normally purl and you can see that it's a purl stitch because the bump of your stitch is not at the front of your work, it's at the back of your work, you still want to purl that stitch. And then you're going to lift as normal. So you want to work across your row, doing exactly that all the way along until you have just one stitch left on this right hand needle and no stitches left on this left hand needle. For the final stitch that we would normally slip purl wise, you are going to knit that stitch. So you don't treat that any differently to any other stitch that you would knit. Once you've worked all the way across and you've cast off and you just have this one loop left on your right hand needle, you can break your yarn. Make sure to leave a nice long tail at least 20 centimetres long so that you can sew in your ends when you're done. And the way that I like to finish this final stitch off is to lift my needle so that it makes the loop bigger and then I can get rid of my needles. I don't need those anymore. And then I want to grab my yarn tail and pull it through that final stitch and then holding on to this work just to stabilize it, I'm going to pull it tight. And then once you've sewn in your ends, you cannot see where that yarn tail was. 
And you can see by casting off on the side that I suggested, you have a similar smooth cast off edge at the top of your work to match the smooth cast on edge at the bottom of your work. A few final bits and bobs before I go. I have left a written pattern on my blog for those of you that like to have written instructions to follow along to. I know this is only a one row repeat, but I appreciate that some of you really do like to have something down on paper or on screen so that you can follow along rather than having to come back to the video. You can knit this blanket in any weight yarn that you want. You just need to tinker with your um, cast on so that you don't end up with a giant blanket if you're using super chunky yarn, for instance. But you can knit this with any weight yarn. It will work and it will look good. It's not just the fact it will work, it will look good in any yarn. That's all from me for today. If you do choose to make one of these blankets, then please tag me on social media. I love to see what you are all knitting. I'm going to link another blanket on the screen now that I think you will love just as much. And I will see you again for another video soon.